Hey guys, welcome to fifth grade, chapter six, lesson seven. We're gonna go ahead and get started. So these ones are gonna be just like your other ones, except now we have a whole number two. So when we are adding, okay, only when we are adding, I just rewrote the problem on here, guys, okay? When we are adding, I'm gonna take my whole numbers and I'm gonna put them over to the side, okay? Then we just have one third and three fourths we're adding, okay? So now, okay, I have to find a common denominator. We know from previous lessons that three and four is gonna be 12. Okay, three I had to multiply by four, multiply the top by four, I get four. I had to multiply the bottom by three, multiply the top by three, I get nine, okay? So, four plus nine is 13. See how the top number is bigger than the bottom number? We can't have that. 12 is gonna go into 13 one time. I would have one left over and my denominator stays the same. Now I just need to add up my whole numbers and I get four, okay? Okay. Four and one twelfth is your answer. Okay. All right. So we're going to do that one more time. Okay. We have four and one eighth plus two and one third. Okay. All right. Now we are going to. Take our whole numbers and put them over here. Okay, now we have one eighth plus one third. Okay, remember, we're gonna go back to our whole numbers. We just need to figure this out first, okay? Smallest number eight and three both going to is 24. Now 24 goes all the way across, okay? Now, Eight, I had to multiply by three to get to 24. So when I multiply the top, I get three. Three, I had to multiply by eight, multiply the top by eight, and I get eight. So now, eight plus three, 11. 11 is prime, I can't reduce it. That actually works for us because it means that our fraction is 11 over 24. And when I add up our whole numbers, I get six. So six and 11 over 24. Okay, all right, you guys are gonna do four and five because they're just like those, okay? And then number six, I'm gonna show you how to do number six, okay? All right, number six, we are subtracting, okay? Make sure you guys are writing down your work as we go, okay? Pause it, go back, do whatever you need to do to write down your work, okay? So, number six says five, and 17 over 18 minus two and two thirds, okay? So first, before I do anything else, I'm going to make my denominators match, okay? Because I need to know that I have enough over here to take away that without borrowing one, which we'll get to later, okay? So. For 18 and three, the smallest common denominator is gonna be 18. So this one I can just rewrite. Okay, our whole number is not going to change. Okay, now to get to 18, I had to multiply three by six. So when I multiply the top by six, I get 12 over 18, okay? So now I'm gonna subtract the whole numbers first. So five minus two is three. The denominator is going to stay the same, okay? 17 minus 12 is five. Five is prime and it doesn't go into 18, so I cannot reduce it. So number six is three and five eighteenths. Okay, we're gonna do another one of those, okay? Okay. 
Okay, number seven is six and three quarters minus one and five eighths. Okay, now rewrite your big numbers. Okay, oops, sorry guys, you can't even see that. Okay, smallest number that four and eight are both going to go into is going to be eight. Well, this one's already eight. So I'm going to rewrite my five, okay? Four, I had to multiply by two to get to eight. So when I multiply the two by that three, I get six, okay? So six can take away five. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract my whole numbers first. Six take away one is five. Six minus five is one. And my denominator stays the same, okay? Make sure you're showing your work as we go. Pause it, okay? Go back, do whatever you need to do, okay? Five and one eight. Okay? All right. I'm going to do, you're going to go ahead and do eight through 12. So you're going to do four and five. You're going to do eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. You totally can. I believe in you. Actually, you know what? We're going to do 12 together because that's a pretty high one, okay? So. Let's go ahead and do 12 together. So 2 and 6 over 25 minus 1 and 1 tenth. Okay? Remember, our whole numbers are going to stay the same. Okay? It's only our denominators that are going to change. Okay? The smallest number that 25 and 10 go into is going to be 50. Okay? Remember, like 2 quarters is 50 cents. Okay, 50 times 2 was, or sorry, 25 times 2 was 50. So now I times the top by 2, I get 12. Okay, 10 times 5, multiply the top by 5, I get 5. Okay, 12 can take away 5, so I'm going to go 2 minus 1 is 1. 12 minus 5 is 7, and my denominator stays the same. Okay. 7 is prime and does not go into 50 evenly, so I'm good with my answer. Okay, 1 and 7 over 50. Okay, sometimes you see those big numbers and you get scared. Just write out the multiples, okay? So I'm just going to write out my multiples of 25 until I get one that ends in a 0 because every multiple of 10 ends in a 0. So when I go 25, and then 50, well, boom, there's 50. Okay, that's my denominator. Okay, so we're going to go ahead down now and do number 13. Okay, and it says, Jacoby bought seven and a half pounds of meatballs. He decided to cook one and a quarter pounds and freeze the rest. How many pounds did he freeze? Well, that means that we have seven and a half. And we're going to take away the one and a quarter that he cooked to find out how much he froze, okay? So, smallest number that two and four go into is going to be four, okay? So, I'm going to keep my big numbers, my whole numbers, okay? I'm going to make my denominators four, okay? This one is already a four. I'm going to keep it, okay? This one, I have to multiply two by two to get to four, so when I multiply the top, I get two. Okay, two can take away one, so I'm gonna go ahead and just go ahead and subtract my whole numbers first. Seven minus one is six. My denominator is gonna be four, because that stays the same, and two minus one is one. Six and a quarter pounds. Okay. Six and one fourth pound. Remember one quarter is the same as one fourth. Okay. Pounds, sorry, it's more than more than one pounds. Okay, all right. Next, okay. It says Jill walked eight and one eighth miles to the park, then seven and two fifths mile home. How many miles did she walk? So eight and one eighth, and and okay. Seven 
and two fifths. Okay. Well, I would, in order to find my common denominator, I would roll, write down my multiples of eight until I got to one that ended in a zero or a five because every multiple of five ends in zero or five. So I know eight, 16, 24, 32, 40. Oh, 40 right there. Okay. So my new denominator is going to be 40. Okay. Now, to get to 40, I had to multiply 8 by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 times, multiply the top by 5, get 5, okay? To get from 5 to 40, I had to multiply it by 8 times, 8 times 5. Well, 2 times 8 is 16, okay? So now, 8 plus 7 is 15. My denominator is going to be 40. 5 plus 16 is 21. 21 and 40 are not divisible by anything in common. So that is your answer, and it's going to be in miles. So 15 and 21 over 40 miles. Okay? All right, guys. We're going to go to the back. You guys are going to do the lesson check, just like always, and we're going to go ahead and do this final review. Okay? So, the theater has 175 seats. There are seven seats in each row. How many rows are there? So, whatever our answer is, it's going to be in rows. 175. Divide that by seven. Okay? Seven is not going to go into one. Seven goes into four, or sorry, to 17. Two times which is 14, subtract, get 3, okay? 3 is definitely smaller than 7, so I'm going to bring down my 5, and 7 goes into 35, 5 times, 5 times 7 is 35, subtract, and get 0. So, 25 rows, okay? All right, during the first 14 days, 2,744 people visited a new store. The same amount of people visited on each day. How many people are in the store each day? How many people? So whatever our answer is going to be in people, okay? So I'm gonna come over here, get a fresh piece of paper. And do the 2,744 people in 14 days to find out how many people visited each day, okay? So, 14 is not going to go into two. It will go into 27 one time. That is 14. When I subtract, I'm gonna get 13, okay? Now, I don't know my multiples of 14 to get from 14 to 134. So I'm just going to write down my multiples of 14. So 14, 28, 42, 56, 70, 84, 98, 112, 126. 140, and hopefully I don't have to go past that, okay? So now I'm going to go 134. It looks like the closest I'm going to get is 126, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 times, okay? 9 times 14 was 126, okay? 4 can't take away 6. I'm going to borrow 1, okay? Making it 14. 14 take away 6 is 8. 2 take away 2 and 1 take away 1 is 0. Okay. So now, 8 is definitely smaller than 14. I'm going to bring down my 4 and 14 goes into 84. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 times, which is 84. Subtract for 0. I can't even see all that. Sorry about that. Okay. So 196 people. 
Okay. All right. Make sure you write down your work, guys. Now that you can see it. Okay. What number is 100 times as great as 0.3? Well, 0.3, 100 has two zeros in it, so I have to move my decimal two times because 100 has two zeros. So one, two, well, I don't have a number there, still in a zero. 30, done. Okay. Mark said that the product of 0 0.02 and 0 0.7 is 14. Mark is wrong. What is the product? So I'm going to come over here, draw a line, and do 0 0.02 and 0 0.7, and I'm going to multiply them. Okay? So 2 times 7 is 14. Okay? But I have to go in 1, 2, 3 times. 1, 2, 3 times. Okay? 0 0.014. Okay? Write down your work, guys. Okay? All right. All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out for 6.7. Come on back for 6.8. See you soon.